Welcome to 99th Monkey Liberty News for Friday, September 5th, 2014. I was traveling yesterday and more on that later, so I did not have an opportunity to put together a video yesterday, so I'm kind of playing catch up a little bit today. And I noticed this from about a week ago that I had not noticed before from RT. Ecuador set to create state-backed digital currency to ditch dollar, and there's a question mark there. Uh, but they are considering it, and uh, the currency is expected to start circulating in December, according to the country's central bank. This is what we would like to see. I mean, it's, it's a digital currency, but that just makes it easier and cheaper to set up. You know, it's cheaper to buy an ebook than it is to buy a printed book uh, because nobody has to uh, ha go through the expense of paper and ink and the, the actual physical printed paper. So this is seen by many as a step to abandon the US dollar, the currency now used by the Central American country. And, uh, you know, it's, it's sad. I hate to root for people who are breaking the dollar, but the dollar is the Federal Reserve Bank system. And, of course, uh, I want to see that come to an end. And it's, uh, if we have Treasury notes, U.S. Treasury notes, that really are constitutional money, uh, and we call those dollars, that would be great but these Federal Reserve notes that are thought of as the US dollar uh, we gotta get rid of those and I'm glad when people do uh, another article I noticed that was from a week ago from Blue Nation Review judge sentenced for selling kids into for-profit prison I looking around I believe more and more people are becoming aware of the fraud that calls itself the US government and uh, is a fraud replacing the, the Republic for the United States of America and uh, this is one of those exposés and here's I notice also latest news uh, Joan Rivers also very sadly she did die and you've probably heard that and a few days ago I uh, put up the video of her calling Michelle Obama a tranny and uh, the fact that she was in a coma in the hospital. So that is a loss for all of us that she has died and I can't help but feel there is a link there. I want to highlight this battleforthenet.com September 10th is the internet slowdown cable companies want to slow down and break your favorite sites for profit to fight back let's cover the web with symbolic loading icons to remind everyone what an internet without net neutrality would look like and drive record numbers of emails and calls to lawmakers are you in I haven't done anything about this yet, but I do plan to participate. And if you have a website, there is code that you can pick up here and uh, use the code to create one of these on your website. I'm not sure yet how it will work, if it will work with WordPress. I may have to put it as text in a margin or something. But uh, this is seems like a great idea to me and it's crucial to raise awareness that internet freedom could be circling the drain unless everybody who wants internet freedom insists that we continue to have it so the more people we can make aware of this the better and the day for that has been set for raising awareness is September 10th so you might want to visit this website and uh, at least, you know, share it on Facebook and um, maybe if there's any way you, you feel you can
participate on September 10th, great. <laughs> More power to us all. From Campaign for Liberty, if you have nothing to hide, you still have something to fear. And uh, this is an article about the just the spy network that is has been constructed to spy on all Americans. And uh, Campaign for Liberty has put together three stories that show the fallacy of this statement that if you have nothing to hide, you still have something to the fall fallacy that you don't have anything to fear uh, if you don't have anything to hide. So that I found interesting, particularly in light of the fact that as I was traveling, I uh, it was pre-screened or pre-checked by the TSA and was able to very quickly pass through the, uh, the line at the airport to board a plane. I, I really have mixed feelings about this and I need to find out more. Uh, I don't, according to this article from InfoWars, give us your fingerprints, web history, and you can keep your shoes on. I, at this point, have not researched pre-check or pre-screen. I, I don't know what's involved, how deeply they delve into your, your personal life, your your web history, whatever. Uh, they probably have my fingerprints because I have a California real estate license and I had to be fingerprinted in order to receive that license. Uh, so, and I, again, I don't know exactly what they looked at in order to pre-screen me. I don't know what the real cost was. I didn't pay. You can voluntarily pay a hundred dollars, and I, maybe they're trying to sell this service. I don't know, but uh, I do without knowing what they check, what they looked at to to pre-screen me. I there are a few both positives and negatives that I that I want to address. The positive is, I literally walked right through. I. I I was I didn't realize I had been pre-screened. I was directed to a line and I started going through the usual drill of getting my computer out of the bag and taking my shoes off and all that. And uh, the TSA people who were working there said, "Ma'am, ma'am, you don't have to do any of that. Just walk through the metal detector and put your things put your belongings on the uh, the conveyor belt to be x-rayed or whatever it is they do to them. I was astonished. I have to admit I was happy. I was delighted, quite frankly. Uh, <laughs> it was like the old days before 9-11. I literally just walked through. And it was great. Um, but here, here are some thoughts that I have. Yeah, I was pre-screened. I don't know. They, they evidently considered me low risk. Uh, that's cool because I wasn't sure that I wouldn't be on the no-fly list. So, awesome. Um, but this is a, a very flawed system, I think. Um, it would be pretty easy to place something in the luggage of somebody who was pre-screened. Uh, you could call a taxi to take you to the airport and terrorists, let's face it, if they were real, uh, could have something set up in the taxi company where uh, when somebody answered an airport call, they, they would send somebody who was a terrorist and place something in the luggage of somebody who was going to the airport. Um, how would they know the person was pre-screened? Well, that, that is a piece of the puzzle. But I, again, I see this system, if they're serious about security, this pre-check, pre-screen, whatever, is flawed. 
it's uh, if they're really if they're trying to have safety, and if and this is a big if, all the other claims they make are true of why they need to uh, have people go through naked scanners and, and that sort of thing, then. Th this this system's not safe. This pre-screening, pre-check, this isn't safe. Of course, I believe it's safe because I don't believe that the threats that they uh, talk about are even real threats. But um, it's again kind of a it's it's a convoluted it's a puzzle. It's convoluted. It it doesn't all make sense. Uh, but now. This says that it costs eighty-five dollars to uh, have it set up so that one-time fee you pay and you're always pre-screened and you can always walk on the plane. So it's a hundred dollars now, and maybe that hundred dollars just goes to line the pockets of the people who won't be making the money pr uh, producing the all the machines that, that they are making a lot of money on now, the naked scanners, and we've all heard about the contracts for those, how lucrative they are. Uh, so now they don't even have to make the machine. Everybody just pays $100. So, you know, they don't even have to build the factories. So they can just make the money from us paying them directly. I, I'm... I really don't know. If you have thoughts on this, I would like for you to leave comments, please, because I'm, I'm working through this. Again, it was delightful to just walk into the airport without having to go through the usual drill. Uh, I, I do want to mention a little add-on here, though. Uh, because of how it always goes, the the whole ordeal of taking out your toiletries in you know having them in two or three ounce bottles and all that I typically pack my things in my checked baggage so I don't have to go through that and some things were stolen some expensive supplements were stolen out of my uh, checked baggage so my plan <laughs> did not work all that well. Had I known I was pre-screened and would be able to walk through, I would have brought more of my toiletries with me. Now for some news that is more serious. John Rappaport is just a bulldog on this CDC story, and I'm so glad he is not letting go. And bulldogs were bred to fight with bulls and they would attach themselves to the bull's throat and not let go. And uh, that's that's what John Rappaport is doing with the CDC story. And thank you, John Rappaport. Bombshell CDC whistleblower goes further. Mercury causes autism. As if we didn't know that, but it's it's great to have it affirmed. I noticed an interesting article on the big picture dot wordpress dot com. Did the creator of the experimental Ebola drug joke about calling twenty five percent of the world's population? And that was evidently an article from Liberty Blitzkrieg. Charles Arntzen is the Regents Professor and Florence Ely Nelson Presidential Chair of the Biodesign Institute at Arizona State University. It took nearly three decades of tireless research and countless millions of U.S. government dollars to produce a few grams of the experimental Ebola drug that may have saved the lives of two U.S. missionaries stricken by the virus in West Africa. And now some are asking this question, if the drug did help missionaries Kent Brantley and Nancy Wright Bull, whose conditions appear to be improving, could the same drug be given to the hundreds of people dying of Ebola in Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Nigeria? And now there are, of course, there's the Congo, and uh, we're meant to be terrified of this Ebola outbreak. Everybody wants us to be terrified of it. I'm not exactly sure why 
uh, if they're trying to sell vaccines, if they're trying to promote this drug, or, you know, are they trying to just claim more of Africa? Is it real in Africa? Are they uh, using Ebola as a eugenics program? And this is from The Independent. British oil giant accused of bribery in tussle over Africa's oldest national park. Uh, people want to steal Africa from Africans. And I think that's fairly clear. And there's also this article. Well, I think it was a comment that somebody left on rents.com. Ebola in Senegal, interesting oil and gas map. And the commenter wrote, Hello, Jeff. It does seem that there is an oil map for each country that has seen West African strain of Ebola break out. The map below is Senegal. I just read that Senegal may have Ebola. If I follow the maps, Cote d'Ivory and Angola could be next. Ghana and Benin, too. We know that Congo has cases. Congo does have a small piece of coastline, as does Benin. I do believe that the people who fish along the coast probably have been complaining to local government officials about the lack of fish. I am sure that this has gotten back to the oil companies in the region. Now there won't be complaints, as there won't be many fishermen left either. These oil maps are kind of a coincidence. No, no, probably not. They can almost be interchanged for Ebola outbreak maps. Oil equals Ebola equals no people and frees up the land. I, I can't help but suspect that this really is what's going on, of course, because I'm a conspiracy theorist. So, you know, how can you not theorize about a conspiracy here uh, when, you, when you overlay these maps? This commenter is right, and uh, I suspect that it's not only she's not only right about the maps overlaying, but what is behind this Ebola outbreak. I believe there are many things behind it. I believe that you know it's it's meant to inspire fear, and and it, it manipulates people on many levels, but it directly kills Africans. And there are corporations who want Africa. Uh, there are also corporations who want California, and, and the UN wants to rewild. If you look at the rewilding maps, huge portions, most of California really, is either red or orange, meaning they don't want people to live in California. And from Natural News, drought apocalypse begins in California as wells run dry. And I've mentioned that uh, it seems reasonable, and I, it wasn't even my idea. Other people have written blogs and articles about it that they would, that, you know, in order to enact Eugenda 21, the eugenicists and the, the social engineers would geoengineer a drought in California to drive people away. And all we need to avoid this uh, drought, even if it were natural, would be the reclamator. And I don't have the link here today. I've mentioned it so many times. It's a closed water system that completely reclaims all household water so that it, it's not gray water, it can actually be used for any purpose, including drinking water. So I, I believe this is contrived, this drought. I believe they want to get people out of California. And even, even if they say, you know, they're geoengineering, they're using chemtrails for good purposes to block out sunshine so that we don't have global warming, well, guess what? We don't even need chemtrails for that purpose. From InfoWars, record return of Arctic ice cap as it grows by 60% in a year. Uh, and this isn't just 
avoiding global warming. This is if the ice cap grows 60% in a year, and if it grew 60% in a year, year over year, most of us, many of us, would be living in a region of the world that would be in an ice age within maybe a couple of decades. Uh, so this, now, if, if people want something to worry about, I guess they could worry about this. Because who wants to live in a snowy environment completely overtaken by an ice age? Uh, we would all have to work a lot harder to survive, and uh, a lot of us would not make it. And again, you know, that's, of course, something that the social engineers want anyway. So it seems like they're trying everything possible to get rid of as many of us as possible. I don't have any really good news today, but I have some humor, and it's Friday, and this is kind of a good news substitute. I imagine that this will cause you to laugh, as it did me. Uh, CIA releases high-resolution image of Russian army vehicles in Ukraine. And uh, I hope you can figure that one out without me explaining it to you. So, hoping that you have a wonderful weekend. I thank you for tuning in for today's 99th Monkey Liberty News. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Also, hoping that you will love one another, take care, and insist on liberty. <laughs>